I know this is a weird time for everybody at the moment. It's, it's really strange for lots of people, especially those who have been in like a routine and have been brought up into that routine and like, you know, work, school, kids. And now that's changed. And it's not just changed in one country, it's changed in all the countries around the world. This thing is phenomenal. But as you can see here, people are still out and about. It's like, people aren't really in panic mode here. And to me, it's kind of strange compared to like, some of the developed countries, example my own, New Zealand, where people are panic buying. Here, people are still socializing. Look at these people just sitting down with no masks on. It's totally different at the moment here. Yeah, people are taking caution and social distancing to a point, but I mean, you just saw back there the locals sitting right next to one another talking. So I can understand at this time, it's like, it may seem strange for people and really weird. We're going to try and park up. So what I was talking about was how strange how strange this event is and um, how it's impacted everybody around the world and the changes and I think a lot of people are feeling really helpless now at this moment in time and it's you know beyond their control uh, they, they can't do what they would normally do in terms of like that routine and I think that's what's really getting to a lot of people they're adapting to these changes that are happening and it's not just happening like weekly these changes are happening happening rapidly daily uh, even by the hour i mean for an example here in vietnam they changed the rules for visas here um, and then the next hour they change them again so things are happening at a really rapid pace and i think for a lot of people those changes are really difficult to um, comprehend uh, because I think as a society we're not used to those changes um, so I think this is a new thing for people to grasp because we're used to routine we're used to being into a, in a system where you know it, it's actually kind of like robotic compliance we'll get up cook breakfast send kids off to school go to work come home um, dinner kids, time, sleep, same routine, same thing. But now that's kind of changing. And it's not just affecting, as I said, one country, it's affecting the whole world. We are all been affected by this change. It kind of makes me think, okay, if those are the ways of old, is that a sign that, should we look at transcending those ways of old? You know, I look at this event here, not as a negative. I see this event as a real positive. And a positive for change, a positive for uh, looking at something we can transcend to that can actually take care of everybody in case this thing bursts out again in the future. I mean, let's be honest, man, the current system, capitalist system, economic system, monetary system, whatever you want to label it, is not capable of actually taking care of the people on the planet at this current moment in time. It just isn't. Look at the, the amount of beds that they require in Italy, for example, um, and the uh, ongoing work that uh, those poor doctors and nurses have to put up with, but not just in Italy, all around the world. Um, and they're putting their lives at risk and in danger as well. So that, to me, tells me that the current system is not capable of meeting the human needs at this current time. And I think what I got from it is that I think it is time for us to transcend to something 
that can take care of people's needs that we can uh, look at ways of uh, community ways of coming together in times like this I'm seeing some real positive things happening um, around the world in terms of groups starting up to support one another um, they know that uh, there are going to be a lot of job losses that are going to be coming in and so a lot of these people now are creating Facebook groups and support groups uh, in communities and I think that's really important and the real best thing that people can do is to create these communities and support one another through these times because there are going to be people out there who are going to be very vulnerable and um, and also people that won't speak out but I think these platforms will give us the opportunity to engage with one another uh, to support one another and um, collaborate even though we have this new I would say coded um, it sounds like a military coded term social distancing and self-isolation um, we can still collaborate together and um, I think that's where our strength lies is uh, in this connectivity that uh, I don't think we used to do it as much as we should have when we were doing our routine when we would go to work when we would be in that robotic mode but now we've actually kind of waking up a bit and going holy shit okay this thing is kind of like slapped me in the face right now and um, let's look at something something new what, what can I do to, 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 to make changes and um, what, what is this telling me what is this telling you what is this telling our community there's all these different questions that are flying around uh, so I think it's really important that uh, community and connectivity at this moment is important um, even though we have those uh, coded coded words self-isolation and social distancing we can still um, do some collect collectivity and uh, connectivity to uh, look at ways of um, and ideas of transcending uh, possibilities of transcending what we currently have to what we could possibly look at going to and I know it's going to be hard for people because at the moment they're right about the present for now and that's understandable and so that's where things like the panic buying comes in and this fear uh, and, and obviously it's, I think it's not just about fear I think it's about the unknown people are not uh, don't know know what's going to happen so there's that vulnerability there and I think that feeling is the feeling that reacts people into this state of panic and um, I can understand because it's just it's a human it's a human thing it's not a human trait it's I think it's environmentally created but it's a human reaction for us to become fear fearful and so and protective um, because it's a survival thing and I think we've been in that survival mode for quite a long time on this planet a majority if you look at the time we spend in a day in survival mode how long do you if you look at your day and you analyze your day how much of that time have you been in survival mode survival mode meaning going to work to get money learning education for you to go to work to get money um, I'd say the majority of it besides sleep would be in survival mode and we've been in that mode for quite a long time in this paradigm currently and I and I and I hope that we can look at these events or this event as a positive that we can create something better that we can create a, a, a better change at the same time I will I will tell people to be very weary uh, and wary of bearers of false hope the bearers of false hope and false gifts and the bearers of those that um, offer solutions um, mandatorily and I, I do say Christian authority as well Christian authority we, we are still in a monetary system so in a monetary system there is reward and people get rewarded for corruption it's elements of the monetary system so those are part of the monetary system as well as competition self-interest 
um, there is the reward mechanism. So just be wary of those uh, in authority and question authority if you can. But as you can see here, there seems to be a calmness uh, with the people here. No panic buying. I mean, people's, people have their shops still open um, and the vegan uh, buffet place is still open. So businesses are still operating. There's no lockdown here, which is, I'm thankful for. But we still have to take those precautions of social distancing, even though you saw some of the Vietnamese not social distancing. But that comes in time. I mean, they, they, they said now it's compulsory if you're in public spaces to wear a mask in Vietnam. If, you're, if you don't, you could get fined. There's no one panic buying in the supermarkets. I went to the supermarket last night and um, no big lines, lots of toilet paper, supplies are there. Um, and I'm really grateful actually of the way the government here in Vietnam is taking control of the uh, situation. I mean, we only have about 103 at the moment as of the um, 22nd. Uh, so that's awesome because being a country of 95 million people, you'd think that uh, would be up there with Italy, but no, they've really taken some real good uh, measures and put them in place and um, and also the support that they're giving for those that are quarantined giving them free accommodation for a couple of weeks 14 days free wi-fi food um, the necessary essentials um, to help them through that time and not only for the locals that are in quarantine but also for the foreigners that are in quarantine so i'm hoping that the actual government can actually come on board and give some more leniency to people like myself who's um, work visas and that will expire and we need to extend them uh, to actually give us some len leniency in terms of pricing because um, it can be quite pricey uh, for some of the visa extensions here anyway I thought I'd have a bit of a chat and give you a bit of a look at the some of the streets here and the vibes here in uh, Hanoi Vietnam I myself fantastic I've been drinking um, lemon honey ginger and uh, exercising and um, eating healthy um, but still trying to connect with people uh, while also being cautious of my social distancing and um, and I'm fine I'm great so uh, I just really hope those back home in New Zealand at this time and Australia and all around the world actually um, and those that are about to be locked down I just wish you guys all the best keep in touch with everyone out there uh, if you have your supplies fine and um, yes listen to your government but at the same time if things don't sit right with you question them as well don't be scared to question authority uh, because it has to be transparent and um, and I think that's important. We don't want to lose that right to actually Christian authority, but just giving you just my thoughts and uh, showing you a bit of Hanoi, Vietnam in another place that's, you, you may be in Australia, you may be in New Zealand, you may be in Brazil, and you want to know what's going on here. Well, that's what's going on here. There's no panic, there's no buying, and um, it's kind of relaxed here. Um, so um, I'm in a good space here at the moment. The good thing is I've uh, got a bit of free time so I can catch up on a lot of online work and um, a lot of stuff. I'll be limiting my travel obviously but I, I wouldn't mind going out for day trips from Hanoi, doing motorbike trips, solo trips I think will be cool and that's fine. We're allowed to do that here. Um, so yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this video we're going to leave it at that feeling a little bit hungry time to grab something to eat and uh keep tuned in we'll see you guys on the next video experience the journey inspire others live life guys